What's up everyone? So this video, I'm going to go over how to create my a resume. I'm going to go over my resume and just how to how to add things onto your resume that look good and how to organize it to look good. I'm also going to go over uh, in the next in the next video about how to prepare for an interview and how to look for that job that that you want. So first off, the format, let's look at the format for my resume. So I have a one page resume, as you can see, um, different sections, education, relevant experience, work experience, skills, and then references. So the format is good, is very important because you need it to be uniform all throughout. You want all the bullet points to align, as you can see they did, and I spent so long trying to align those. And then you really want to like show off the skills that you have for the job that you want. And so let's start at the top. So I start off with my name really big at the front, Daniel Castres, just so people know who they're looking at. First of all, I put in my email right there. I put in my phone number and I put in my LinkedIn. And now some other people like, that code a lot, maybe you would put in their stack overflow, which is like all the projects that they've worked on. Or some people will put their address. I don't really find a need in that just because what are they going to do with that information? You already put it in whenever you apply for a job. So I don't I don't think a, an address is necessarily uh, necessary. Maybe they use the address to see if you'd be relocating or not. But again, you put that usually in the application process of uh, getting a job and so let's okay so normally the first section it, there would be an objection uh, objective section and I don't have that just because I find it 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 uses too much space for what it provides for what it adds to your resume uh, I would recommend it if you don't have a full page resume put in a little objective I am a college or I'm a high school student pursuing this this and this and this job will help me in my future career because of this this and this there's just something along those lines i used to have one in there but it just became a little too much and i didn't want to have a page in a little bit a little bit extra so um i just decided to get rid of the objective but again there's no downside to the objective other than for me it just adds a little too much space so then we come into education. So put your most relevant education at the top. So for you guys, it would be high school, or maybe maybe if you have any college courses that you've taken, you could put those up there. So I put Texas A&M University from when I started to when I'll end. December 2020 is still technically an expected date, but since it's more concrete now, because it's my last semester and I know, then I put December 2020. And then I went, went ahead and put in my uh, my degree that I'm in, electronic systems engineering technology and a minor in cybersecurity. And then after high school, I also did, I went to the Merchant Marine Academy originally, like I told y'all. And so that's what I have right there. So it has the, the dates that I was there and has what I did when I was there. So a little bit of leadership right there. Um, I didn't put in my major just because I found it would be more useful to put in the leadership experience I have there than the actual major I had there. So you just have to kind of be smart about that. Think about like what you did there, what 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 will have the largest impact for your resume. And then I put in my, and then, okay, so for you guys, you might just have one bullet, maybe two, if you have a little bit of college experience. But I don't have my high school in here just because if I went to university, they probably figured that I already graduated high school. That's why I didn't put that in there. Now for you guys, you would probably start off with your high school, the date you started, the date you expect to graduate. Tell them my high school had a little bit of focus, focus areas and I focused more on business. So maybe you could put in study of focus business or study of focus engineering or something like that to kind of like hone in on what, what you kind of like focused on while you're in high school. Or maybe you were, I don't know, 
I think education should be more education based and you put your clubs in a different section. So oh I also I didn't put in my GPA just because I don't want that to be something that they look at and reconsider me or something like that. I want them to like judge me based off my experience, my education and leadership experience rather than my GPA. And like if they ask of course, I'll give it to them. I'll send them um, the, the uh, but also on one hand, if you have a super, super high GPA, then yes, of course, it'll help. But if it's average or, or, or almost there, then I don't think it's worth it because then they could just throw you out. So um, that's why I don't have mine in there. But I know some people with like 4.0s definitely, definitely should have them in there just because that shows how smart they are. And it's not to say that you're not smart, it's just how they look at resumes is, is they look at that and see um, as a disqualifier. So if they really like you, then they'll ask you and it won't be too much of a factor. So next I have relevant experience. So what's the difference between relevant experience and work experience? So relevant experience is things that I found relevant in my studies at A&M. So since I wanna go into engineering, relevant experience in engineering so i don't have any experience work experience in engineering so i put in like projects i've done um the internship i did that might become work but it's not because it was just a big old big big project that we did so that's why i put that in relevant experience so let's read this so i put in students engineering council directed internship and then I put in what I was, team leader and financial analyst right here. From May 2020 to August 2020. I put it in where it was located, call station. And I put in, so whenever I put in these three bullet points, I try to put three to two bullet points of what I did. So I enhanced my leadership communication skills teamwork through an interactive program conducted by 20 plus industry experts. So you should be very specific. That's why I put 20 plus industry experts. I didn't put multiple industry experts. I put 20 plus. I put in what I improved, my leadership communication skills teamwork, which is just words that recruiters like to hear. Um, and then I go into doing more of the technical stuff of what I did, design it innovative. This is an important word. Instead of just saying designed a VR system, I made sure that it sounded futuristic, more complex, more exactly exactly what they want to hear, like not just something that everyone has done. So innovative VR system for car dealerships with potential and cost savings up to 25%. So this is important too because I'm saying exactly how much they could save car dealerships. Um, so it's important to put in words like that, like innovative, and then exactly how much they're saving. This allows them to really like understand the importance of your project and just, instead of just saying it was a VR system for dealerships. That would save them money. This really is specific. It gets them interested in the product or in the experience that I had, and um, it makes them want to read more of your of your relevant experience. So let a team of five. So I could have just said let a team, but of five shows like how many people I was in charge of through the design process, honing leadership skills. So just saying how I, um, how I had leadership experience in this whole entire in internship. So again, you want about three to two bullet points per experience, which will really help you so let's move on to the next one advanced integrated mobile solutions so this is my capstone project so i was a software engineer as you guys know and i'm still working on this and maybe this could go above this one now just because it's still going on this one ended but you put your most um most recent at the top but these two are like we're kind of went in hand in hand because this one was inside of this one so that's why I put it above. But now since August has passed, I should probably put this one above. So this one, I talked about what we did. 
encapsulate what I did specifically, um, things that I did, what code I used, developed, developed the code. Um, so again, you just really want to focus on, on the technical stuff and be specific about how um, about how we had weekly reports among 30 plus college students and professors, stuff like that. And so these are my last two ones. They have two bullet points just because they have less less technical stuff to do with them and they're a little bit further away from where we are now. These are September, these are 2019 and these are all 2020. So um, the ones more recent should require more work, more bullet points, more, uh, more specific. So I was a software engineer on this one, designed and generated. Lab view software, so they know what I'm capable of, or what software I'm capable of understanding. Wireless commands to robot, install DAG hardware instruments, and let a team to play second. So I was able to use lead, a good word that they like because it shows leadership skills. Second place. Out of 30, this is specific because it shows how many, how good we were instead of just saying play second out of how many teams too. So this is able to really show how, how well you did. Um, and then again, just another relevant experience. And then right here, we go down to work experience. So as you guys know, Brian Collegiate High School Ag Mentor from 2019 to now. Where is it? Brian, Texas. What I do, track progress with the public school to ensure academic success, mentor students. Um, again, you want to show they love mentorship, sk mentorship skills. So you try to put those uh, mentorship skills and experiences in there. And this doesn't have anything really to do with my engineering background. That's why it's under work experience, just because um, this is more work than it was relevant to what I want to do, but it also shows that I have initiative in being a mentor and I was able to evaluate and mentor students. So this would be perfect for a supervisor role because you're able to evaluate and mentor and I've already done that. And then I go to Pioneer Bank. This one was a long time ago. This is the only thing that I have in here that was from high school just because I think it's important to show that I was able to understand how banks work and because um, I internship at every position within the bank from the teller to the CEO. So this shows that uh, exactly what I did, that I was at the bottom all the way to the top and I know how banks work all the way from the bottom to the top from the from all different aspects. And then um, I showed how I was able to collaborate <clears throat> with high ups to establish a 50 person team for a profitable company and how I communicated with everyone from C from customer to CEO. And I think this is a super important bullet point because it's, because communication is really key in your career and showing that you can communicate different, showing that you have an understanding that you have to communicate differently with the customer to CEO to everyone in your company is super important. Um, you need to be straight up with your C CEO, tell them what's wrong, how you're going to fix it with your customer. You need to, you can't sugarcoat things and you need to, um, you need to tell them the truth and, and the customers are always right. So then I go to skills, programming, experience with these types of programming programs. Um, if I felt more confident, I would probably put uh, like like programs that I, I know very well or something like that. But I have experience with all of these, so I, I think it would be easy for me to pick up on these and learn these in a professional setting. And then softwares I used, languages, and certificates. And then I used to have another bullet point right here of activities that I do, like running, just to relate to the recruiter more. I just took it out just because I didn't I didn't want to have one little thing on that second page so um, I took it out but in high school you guys can add that because your resume probably could have a little bit more room and so um, you could add uh, hobbies um, and then what you do for fun because 
every interview I've been in, they have always asked me, so what are your hobbies? And I think this allows you to relate to the recruiter whenever they don't see your face even more than other people when they don't have anything to relate to. So I put football, running, and then as soon as I got in there, they're like, oh, do you see, did you watch football on Sunday or something like that? And so it has something that you guys can relate to. Um, again, I just had to take it out because I didn't have space. And then references uh, provided upon request. So just in case they need to have any follow-up questions. So again, this is how you create a nice resume. Make sure the formatting is right. Make sure it all looks nice and, and neat and all consistent throughout. And then, yeah, for you guys, you might not have too many real, too much relevant experience or maybe not even work experience. But um, what really helps is doing projects that you like outside of school so that you can, put, you can start creating relevant experience, stuff that you did outside of school fit perfectly right there. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, just let me know and I can help you or even just look over a resume and um, see, see how it stacks up. All right. Thank you all for watching.